Hello everyone, we will continue with the course evaluation of textile material. In last weeks, what we have discussed is that the population sample and how to draw the sample we have discussed and also we have seen that different types of material or materials in different form is to be sampled in different way. Also we have discussed about practical statistics like how to do significance testing, what are the implications of this significance testing in taking decision. Now, today we are going to start the actual evaluation of textile material. What we will discuss? We are actually it has been divided into three distinct categories because textile materials are mainly in three forms. First, it is a loose fiber form, second, continuous yarn form, and third, it is a fabric form. So, overall, the planning is that we will try to first finish the characteristics of fiber, then we will discuss yarn and finally, we will discuss the characteristics of fabrics. So, today we will start the evaluation of one of the most important characteristics of fiber which is length. Length of fiber particularly for man made fiber it is not that important. For natural fiber except say silk for rest other fibers are basically it is a discontinuous in nature. So, we must try to see the how to measure the fiber length and majority of the fibers textile fibers for apparel use or natural fiber we are talking about is cotton and wool. So, our focus will be here to measure the length of cotton and wool. So, first let us see why why to measure the fiber length. First is that quality assessment. So, quality of a fiber is dependent on various parameters. For example, fiber length, how long the fiber is, its uh, diameter, its strength. So, length is one of the parameters which is important to be measured. Okay. So, for quality assessment of any fiber, so we have to first measure the length particularly staple fiber. Then quality prediction. So, quality prediction here that means quality of the final product. So, quality prediction here the final product is either in the form of yarn or in the form of fabric. So, longer fiber will have higher contact area. So, we can have better yarn strength. So, to have higher yarn strength we need longer fiber. So, our idea is to know by testing the fiber length the how long the fiber is and if the length 
is less than the prescribed length, we may straight away reject that fiber. Okay. And also long fiber will have better processability in spinning. So, fibers with short fiber, higher quantity of short fiber, higher proportion of short fiber creates problem. There are various characteristics which are directly related with the fiber length. These are strength, evenness and even for longer fiber, we can play with the amount of twist. So, for if we use the longer fiber, we can have lower twist. So, lower the twist, the appearance of yarn and fabric will be much better. So, it will in enhance the luster of fabric. Okay. So, directly we can predict from the length value, what will be the ultimate quality or uh, char characteristics of the final product. Next importance is that, that fiber breakage study. So, we may like to know that the whether a particular machine like blow room, carding or any other machine combing or any other machine. So, due to the setting problematic setting, so fiber may get damaged. So, uh, break, uh, fiber may break. So, to study the breakage of fiber, what we have to do? We have to first measure the length. So, we measure the length before processing and also after processing and if we compare that whether there is any significant change in length. So, significant reduction in length, if at all there is any significant reduction in length, we can we can actually reprocess the uh, material and also we can do proper checking of the system. So, by measuring the fiber length, we can predict the performance of the particular process. Also, machine setting depends on the fiber length. So, depending on the long uh, fiber length, so longer fiber will need longer setting. So, for machine, machine setting, its uh, fiber length data is extremely important. Next is that combing efficiency. So, in combing, what our idea, our idea is to remove the short fiber. So, that how much short fiber is being removed during combing, that is the combing efficiency. So, that we can predict by measuring the fiber length. And also, we can all we can see, we can check whether any long fiber loss is there or not. So, combing's main objective is to remove the short fiber less than prescribed uh, specified length. So, if the combing setting, combing performance is not up to the mark, then it may remove the long fiber also. So, by checking or by measuring the fiber length or fiber length distribution, we can tell that whether the combing is doing its performance perfectly or not. Okay. So, fiber length now let us see the fiber length characteristics, length of fiber, how can we express, what are the different ways to express the fiber length and one by one we will discuss in details. So, fiber lengths can be expressed in terms of first staple length. Okay. Staple length we will discuss in detail, it is a overall idea about the length. Okay. This is the staple length. Next is that mean length. So, mean le fiber length we can express in terms of mean length. Next, it is upper quartile length U Q L, uh, U -Q -L okay, upper quartile length. 
fourth one is by effective length we can express the fiber length in terms of effective length modal length okay span length span length there are different types of span lengths so more commonly used span lengths are 50 percent span length and 2.5 percent span length next is upper half mean length and all these parameters they are important but different measuring technique this te te different measuring technique gives different type of parameter okay so these are the uh, upper half mean length span length this two parameters the it's given by the fibrograph okay like effective length we can measure by the comb shutter diagram so upper quarter length effective length mean length we can measure by comb shutter diagram so different methods of measurement they give different parameters next is that uh, after knowing the fiber length we would like to know the variability of fiber length so most of the almost all the natural fibers they are not uniform in length so for a fiber which is say mean length is longer but if the variation is very high then fiber will be rejectable so that performance of the fiber is actually just by not only by the mean length or span length it also it's judged by the variation in length so fiber it is very important to know the variation variation and length of the fiber so variation in length this it's expressed by first is the dispersion percentage dispersion percentage we can get from the uh, shorter diagram uniformity index is another way of expression of fiber length variation then uniformity ratio so uniformity index and uniformity ratio we can get from fibrogram this details we will discuss short fiber content we can get from the uh, this uh, different types of curves and the floating fiber index so these are the ways from by which we can express the fiber length uh, distribution fiber length variation okay now one by one we are to, we will try to understand the terms so staple length staple length actually it's uh, defined by us department of agriculture usda it's a standard definition what they have made is the it's the normal length of typical portion of staple fiber having relative humidity of 65 percent and temperature of 70 degree fahrenheit without regard to value or quality this is the standard definition now what does it mean it is a it means that it is a typical length we cannot get exact value it is a typical value so typically it is a it is a we get like this in the form so you take one some tuft then draw and double draw and double in this way we would like to make the fibers stand parallel most of the fibers we are making parallel by drawing and doubling so in this way and it will be typically half inch width okay this is the tuft now let me draw and show you so typical length is that so these are the fibers okay now this fiber we have actually doubled repeatedly like what we are doing we are drafting and doubling drafting and doubling in this way what we will get we will get the fiber strand like this here what we will do we are not bothered about the long fibers this fibers we are not bothered about the projected fibers are not the important one here we will try to do take one point where there is a clear change in density 
these are the higher density portion where more majority of fibers are there okay and suddenly there is a change so we by actually experience we will get length this is the length where the in either sides so at this point so this is the point and this is point a and point b so up between a and b majority of fibers are there majority of suddenly after a if we go beyond a so left side of a here we will see sudden change in density is there so there is a clear line is there similarly in case of b so up to b there is a density is there more majority of fibers are there so beyond b there is a sudden change in density few fibers so, we are we are discarding this fibers so this length ab length this is the actually staple length here the staple length we actually cannot use for any quality purpose this value is used basically for only comparative quick uh, evaluation of fiber length so that's why it's written without regard to value and quality so we would would like to know the what is the overall length of the majority of the fiber so as per usda the classification of cotton fiber according to the staple length so staple length is just by the experienced person okay and if different person does so if we if, if we give the, the person fiber bundle fiber bulk okay to different person so they will land up with different results so it's a subjective in nature only experienced person can do this okay. <coughs> and as per the usda norms so less than 20.6 millimeter it's a short fiber 20.6 to 25.4 it's a medium length fiber and like that so above 34.9 it's a millimeter it's a extra long fiber so this is the actually classification of staple length as per usda okay. next is that it's a mean length mean length of the fiber is defined as the it's a average length of all fibers in the test specimen based on weight length data so it can be weight length data or it can be number length data based on the weighing so based on the mass of the fiber mass for a particular length group we can get the mean length which is called the weight length data weight so mean length based on weight so ml w is the w1 l1 w2 l2 w3 l3 like that so if here it has the example is that though the fibers are divided into three length groups l1 l2 l3 so l1 length group that is the their mass is w1 l2 length group mass is w2 l3 length groups mass is w3 so the mean length based on the mass weight so that is a divided by w1 w2 w3 now let us try to see here suppose this is the fiber length distribution curve here what we are doing these are the fibers So, cotton fibers are there or maybe wool fiber and this fiber this is the length and this is a proportion of fiber ok. Now, this we can have say these fibers are length group L 1 the all these fibers we are dividing into say 4 length groups this is say L 2. So, this means L 1 means this is upper limit uh, this one is lower lower limit and mean point so this is the range okay class limit and l1 is the that mid value of the class so this is l1 group this one l2 similarly this is say l3 
length group L 3 and this is the length group say L 4 like this. Now, then what we do? We take this fibers and measure the mass of the fiber, mass of the fibers in a particular say micro balance this is becoming W 1. Here the mass is W 2, here the mass is W 3, W 4 like this. So, that mean length based on the mass will be L 1 multiplied by W 1 plus L 2 multiplied by W 2 like this divided by W 1 plus W 2 plus. So, this is the way we can measure the mean length based on mass. Okay. It also can be calculated based on the number. In that case, it is called number length data. Okay. So, number length data it is a simple. So, mean length based on number is that m l n l 1 plus l 2 plus l 3 so on and then l is that number. Now, let us see once again. Suppose, we have fibers these are the fibers. Now, what we do this is L 1, L 2, L 3, L 4, L 5, L 6, L 7, L 8. So, say these are the L 8 fibers. So, you want to know mean length. So, it is very simple you just add and then divide by the number of fibers. So, this is L 1 plus L 2 plus L 8 divided by so, this is the mean length divided by western length. So, we must clearly understand the difference between mass based length and number based length. So, these terms are widely used in the industry both in cotton industry particularly in woolen industry the mass based data and number based data. Next term is that upper quartile length. So, as per ASTM the upper quartile length is defined as the fiber length which is exceeded by 25 percent by weight in the test specimen that is the upper quartile length. Now, again let us discuss the upper quartile length based on say mass. So, the again this is the fiber length distribution so, length and this is the proportion proportion of fiber. Okay. Now, here this mass has this has got say x mass total if we take the total uh, fiber the mass of the total fiber is say x milligram x unit. Now, then we will keep on taking the from the starting from right side we will keep on weighing this. So, what is that? It is a top 20 percent 25 percent. Okay. So, that is why to you till it has become say 75, 75 percent suppose at this point this is the weight of weight is 0 0.75 x mass. So, that from there this point, so this is the 25 percent weight, this is 25 percent weight mass. If we talk about the mass, this is total mass is 75 percent. So, this length is called upper quartile length. So, that as per definition the upper quartile length is defined as the fiber length which exceeded by 25 percent of fibers by weight. So, that means that particular length okay, is exceeded. So, rest 25 percent fibers will be more than that length okay. that is called upper quartile length and based on that the it has been classified again. So, upper quartile length we can see the less than 27.9 is the short fiber 27.9 to 31.5 it is a medium fiber. Then this is this 
actual classification is as per ASTM classification, but this may not be true for all the fibers like some short staple fiber we cannot uh, uh, use this type of uh, characteristics this type of classification because in short staple fiber 27.9 millimeter may be the longest fiber. So, that way it is this is for a particular type of fiber. Next is the effective length. So, the effective length is the longer than the average length, it is longer than the average length and is measure is the measure of the length of the majority of long fiber in the sample. So, here in this picture it is this is the shorter diagram in this shorter diagram we will discuss details of the shorter diagram, but here let us try to understand the effective length here it is L L dash is the length. Okay. L L dash is the length which is called effective length. Now, here it is a longer than mean length, mean length will be somewhere here if we measure mean length will be somewhere here. So, effective length is longer than the average length of the fiber and is a measure of the length of the majority of the long fiber here. So, majority of the long fiber here it is the effective length. The effective length is described statistically by the upper quartile of the fiber length distribution obtained by ignoring the short fiber. Now, this is we have to understand here. So, this is the length described statistically by the upper quartile of the length distribution, this is the length distribution obtained by the by ignoring the short fibers whose length is less than half of the effective length. Now, this is the effective length suppose this is a mid point. So, the half of the effective length is this one. So, if we remove this length this R B this portion if we remove the, that means, re, remaining fibers will be this one O R. So, O R if we divide into four equal terms then this O L is the upper quartile, upper quartile. So, you are you divide O L then another half one fourth then one fourth and up to O R. Okay. So, this O R we are dividing into fourth term. So, that this one fourth top one fourth that distance L 1 L 2 that is called upper quartile of this upper quartile of the fiber length distribution this is called effective length. So, detail we will discuss and this effective length is mainly used for roller setting okay, because it is the uh, it is basically it shows the longer uh, higher uh, portion of the fiber length. Next come the comes the model length, model length is the length of the fiber with higher frequency that means, majority of the fiber lengths are in that zone. So, if we take the distribution here, so suppose this fiber particularly at this length the frequency is this is the frequency, this is the proportion of the fiber. Now, next is that this is the proportion okay. and like that the proportion is actually given here okay, at the horizontal line. Now, we have we must we have to see here which portion has got the width of the rectangle is highest. So, here this the rectangle of this portion the width is highest. So, that length height of that portion that rectangle will be termed as the modal length, which means the majority of the higher frequency of the fiber length is in that range. Okay. The modal length of long staple cotton is higher than the mean length. So, it will get shifted to the higher direction due to the progressive increase in the skewness with the increase in staple length of the fiber. So, with the it will be skewed towards the higher length because the if we are talking about the long staple cotton, long staple cotton the long majority of the long fiber will be on the longer side. Okay. So, that majority of the fibers, so that is why model length will be higher. So, it model from model length we can get overall idea 
a rough idea about the length distribution. Next come the term span length. The span length is the length of the fiber at a distance spanned by a specific percent of fiber or it can be by mass okay, by number or by mass in the test beard considering the remaining uh, so the considering the reading as 100 percent at the starting point of the scanning. Now, let us try to understand here. Now, suppose we have prepared a fiber clamp, this is the clamp okay. and it is typically used in fibrograph, fibro sampler. Now, this clamp is clamping the fiber and this is the type of way type of distribution. So, all the fibers they are starting from the this point the clamping point. Okay. Now, now we like to scan the fiber from this point this is the starting point close to the this clamp okay, point A, this is the point A. So, at this point at the end point here the number of fibers say 100, suppose at this point number of fiber is say 100 let us say. Now, we try to count the number, number of fibers here at this point number of fiber is 100, then we are we try to move from this point a line a b line line a b we try to move rightward away from the clamp. Suppose at this point at point say c again we are trying to count the number of fiber here we have count say this is 100 suppose at this point suppose we are counting the fiber at say it is a say 80. So, this is O at is the starting point at C point it is 80. So, after again further moving suppose at this point at D we have count the number here this number is suppose it is a 50 initially there is 100 fibers now it is 50. Now, this distance O D is known as 50 percent span length. This is the distance O D is the 50 percent span length that means 50 percent of the total fibers are longer than this length that is why 50 percent fiber length O D is the 50 percent span length. Now, we again go further gradually and we, are, we have reached suppose a point where it is a E point. So, at distance O E, so at this at the point E we found that only say 2.5 percent of fibers are there, 2.5 percent of fibers are there. So, here this distance O E is called 2.5 percent span length. So, that that is why this is the distance that one should be careful here higher percent means the, the lower in span length. So, 50 percent span length means it is lower in value than 2.5 percent span length. Okay. So, that the distribution of fiber length it gives idea about the total distribution of the fiber length and so the span length is the length of the fiber fibers at a distance spanned by a specific percent of fiber it can be by number or it can be by weight by weight also we can do okay. in the test beard considering the reading as 100 percent at the 
starting point of scanning. Okay. So, it is the most common span lengths are commercially used are that 2.5 percent span length and 50 percent span length. Now, as we have already discussed, we have seen. So, this is the type of curve we get. Okay. This is the this is the fibrogram. Okay. Now, try to see this is the fibrogram how to form. Initially, say 100 percent fiber here. Now, we have started scanning it normally it is optically scanned the density or number of fibers we can count. on. So, as it is moving here at this point it is a 50 percent of that fibers are there. This is called 50 percent span length. So, it is moving further okay. and number uh, of fiber as it is moving further. So, number pro percent of fiber is reducing gradually. So, length is length from the, uh, the starting point the clamping point is actually increasing. So, number of fibers is reducing it is 20 percent then it is 10 percent 5 percent almost 5 percent and it is also reducing. So, gradually it is reducing to say 3 percent and almost it has reached to say uh, 2.5 percent it is uh, reaching. So, that is why this is the 2.5 percent point here we have reached and after that it is it is going and then ultimately it will be 0. So, this length this length is 2.5 percent fiber. So, if there are 1000 fibers so that means 25 fibers will be there more than that length. So, that is why it is called the 2.5 percent span length. Okay. So, in this way we can measure the span length and based on this fibrogram we can do lots of calculation of other information we will get. So, we will that we will discuss gradually. So, 25 percent span length is defined as the length of fiber at which only 25 2.5 sorry 2.5 percent span length. So, only 2.5 percent of long fibers are excluded. So, rest 97 5 point fibers are below that length. Okay. It provides the reference length for roller setting. Okay. So, we can set the roller based on 2.5 percent fiber length, because it is a majority of the length. only 2.5 percent fibers are uh, there which is which are actually longer and that may get damaged. So, we may this is the reference point if we feel we can set the length little bit above that 2.5 percent length, but that is the reference length to be adjusted. So, that few or if any fibers are broken. So, our idea here is to that okay. okay. So, only 2.5 fibers may break if it is there okay. and 2.5 percent span length is close to upper half mean length. It is total very close to if we do the measure the upper half mean length for long for long staple fiber this is very close. Okay, upper half mean length we will discuss and the 50 percent span length is more valuable as the potential measure of yarn quality and fiber uh, spinning performance. So, 50 percent span length is used for to know the overall fiber length okay, and spinning performance and 2.5 percent span length is basically used for roller setting. It is a longer fiber. So, if we know that 2.5 percent then we cannot say this fiber is longer it is not that. So, if we want to know the average overall idea about the fiber length we have to use only 2 50 percent span length 2.5 percent suppose majority of the fibers are short, okay, but few fibers are long that will give that will give a wrong impression. Okay. So, that is why to know the fiber length characteristics overall length we do not use 2.5 percent we use only 50 percent span length. Okay. 2.5 percent span length only used for setting of yarn setting of uh, machine set, uh, drafting roller setting or de different machine setting. So, that less fibers are broken. Okay. Now, 
Now, what we have discussed that it also gives the idea about the 50 percent span length and 2.5 percent also it gives the idea of mean length and upper half mean length. Okay. So, and from mean length upper half mean length we can get the idea of dispersion of fiber characteristics fiber length. Now, let us see we can see very carefully here. Now, this is the fibrogram and the how the fibrogram is generated that we have seen. Okay. So, 50 percent of fibers are there and then it is moving and fiber percent is in 20 percent in like that 10 percent and ultimately it will be say 2.5 percent is here. So, it is a 2.5 percent of fibers are here and then it has it is ended. Okay. So, that is 0 percent here it is touching. So, this is the 2.5 percent. So, after that what is there? So, what we have to do? We have to draw a tangent from 100 percent point of the curve. So, when once we draw the tangent from 100 percent point it will actually intersect with the x axis at a point A that means, this distance O A is called mean length which is very close to 50 percent span length. Okay. That is the mean length and another tangent we can draw from 50 percent point on the A point and here this is the point B and this distance O B is called upper half mean length. Okay. So, O A is the mean length and this one is the upper half mean length and from there we can do some calculation. Okay. So, 50 percent span length is L L dash okay. and 2.5 percent span length is L 2 dash L 2 L 2 L 2 dash. Okay. So, L 1 L 1 dash is the 50 percent span length L 2 L 2 dash is this is the 2.5 percent span length and O A is mean length and O B is upper half mean length. Okay. And if we take the ratio of 50 percent span length that is the L 1 L 1 dash this one and 2.5 percent span length L 2 L 2 dash this ratio is known as uniformity ratio. Okay. And we can express either in fraction or in percent. So, it is normally it is expressed in percent. So, this multiplied by 100. So, so typically for cotton cotton fiber it is it is ranges from 40 to 50 percent. Okay. That is the range of uh, uniformity ratio and uniformity index is the this is the now uniformity index is the ratio of mean length say O A is the mean length and then upper half mean length. So, O A and O B this ratio is the ratio uh, the, this is the uniformity index and we can again express in terms of fraction or in terms of percent by multiplying by 100 and for normal cotton it is it is ranging from 75 to 80 percent. So, 75 to 80 percent this is the actually may people get confused uniformity ratio and uniformity index. Uniformity index is the ratio of mean length and upper half mean length and uniformity in uh, uniformity ratio is the uh, 2.5 50 percent span length by 2.5 percent span length. And if you see the value this this is actually the it is a basically upper half mean length the uniformity ratio is 1.8 times less than the uniformity index that is typical it is a typical cotton and we can calculate that we will see for most uniform fiber length that is the fiber length of say cut polyester fiber. So, if all the fibers are of same length 
in that case we will see the calculation the uniformity ratio it is typically around 51 percent and uniformity index is 100 percent for that. This we will see okay. now the fiber length variation that fiber length variation this part we have seen here uniformity ratio and uniformity index there are other part other the dispersion percent as I have mentioned already the dispersion percentage we can calculate from the comb sorter diagram okay, where sorter, sorter diagram we can calculate the dispersion percentage and L L dash is the effective length here okay, L L dash is the effective upper quartile length and M M dash is the lower quartile length. Okay. So, if you divide O R O R into 4 terms it will be O L that will be midpoint and then O that point into M M P. Okay. This is the way. So, that means M R and O L they are same problem okay. and this is the upper quartile length that L L dash is upper quartile length which is known as the effective length and M M dash is the lower quartile length and the distance difference between upper quartile and lower quartile is known as inter quartile range. So, that L L dash minus M M dash which what is what does it mean L L dash minus M M dash will be L dash n. So, L dash n n L dash which is inter quartile length that length okay, divided by the L L dash divided by L L dash is the it is called dispersion percent. Okay. Now, let us see how what is the importance of inter quartile range. Suppose, we have two fibers distribution. one fiber is having longer length. So, length is this is the distribution okay. here say it is the same point we have studied. The longest fiber is say O A another distribution is say O dash here the length longest fiber is little bit shorter a dash this is the distribution now now we have to decide which say this is one fiber one fiber two now we can decide which fiber we have to take we have to select so, this is the longest fiber length is O A. So, O A is more than O A dash that is perfect. So, based on the maximum length should we go for the fiber length uh, selection. Okay. Now, here we can measure the length distribution. Okay. Now, this is the length okay. here suppose, suppose this is effective length upper quarter length. Okay. L L dash and here it says suppose it is a M M dash. Now, inter quartile range will be say this is unit suppose 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 unit okay. this is 1, 1, 2, 3 unit. So, this inter quartile range say will be n. So, n L dash will be so L L dash minus M M dash here, but here if you see L 1 L 1 dash on here it will be M 1 M 1 dash. Now, here the difference is in 1 minus in 1 L 1 dash, 
this n 1 l 1 dash is much less than n l dash this one. So, this distance this is the variation this one is the variation. Now, here this although the fiber 1 having longer length higher uh, maximum length and fiber 2 has lower maximum length, but as the variation of the fiber is less much less here. So, the performance of the fiber 2 will be much better than fiber 1. Here there will be high floating fiber, the fiber loss will be very high. Okay. So, we should go for the fiber 2 based on the dispersion percent. So, in this way we from the shorter diagram we can calculate the dispersion percent and we can take decision. So, dispersion percent will give idea about the running performance of the yard. Okay. Now, uniformity index as we have already discussed this is the ratio of the mean length to the upper half mean length that is the sorry uniformity index. So, this is uniformity index mean length and upper half mean length that we have seen. So, for very high uniformity index is if it is more than 85 percent we can tell it is a very high uniformity index and if it is less than 77 percent. So, it is a low. So, it ranges from typically from this is for very good quality, but in general for cotton it is for uh, from USDA. So, but for in general it is it varies from 70 to 80 percent okay. and uniformity ratio as we have already discussed it is the ratio of the 50 percent span length divided by 2.5 percent span length. Okay. And if we you can uh, express in terms of percent also by multiplying by 100 and this is the value. So, it is typically 40 to 50 percent that is the range. Now, it is smaller value. So, uniformity ratio always we should remember it is a smaller in value than the uniformity index by a factor roughly about 1.8. So, if someone asks oh, I have a yarn I have a fiber of say 45 percent uniformity ratio what is the expected uniformity index. So, that is if we multiply it by 1.8. So, then we will give get a rough idea about the uniformity index. Okay. Now, short fiber content and that we can get directly from the shorter diagram. So, what is that shorter diagram here short fiber. So, if this are, these are the different lengths. Okay. This is the upper quartile length, lower quartile length, and uh, this is the lower and length less than anything less than half inch. The proportion of fiber, okay, that may be by mass or by number also. Normally, it's by mass. So, short fiber content is the percent by weight of fiber having length less than the half of the um, half of an inch. Okay. Now, now, short fiber content S f c percent what we do this is the shorter diagram and we know that this is the length. Okay. Now, where suppose this is this length is say half inch. Now, we take this length half inch half inch length. Now, we discard this fiber, we collect this fiber, we collect this fiber and this is the length and and then we can take the mass. So, total mass of this fiber total biogram is a w here it is a w 1. So, then we can get the proportion percent by weight. we can take the mass and this is the uh, that is the uh, percent of the short fiber. Short fiber content it is important in 
various uh, applications. It can also be measured by in person by number as I have mentioned of fiber having length less than half inch okay, with respect uh, with the respective short fiber content percent in number. Okay. So, that by weight or by number we can calculate and the short fiber content of fiber is very important particularly in combing. So, percent short fiber in cotton increases the cost of processing. Okay. Like if the short fiber content is more, so that fibers less than half inch typically we would like to remove discard this fiber. Okay. When once we go for combing, we try to remove all the fibers less than half of inch because these fibers will create problem of hairiness and strength related problem and higher short fiber content means it is a it will go for waste and it is a economically it is not viable it is a uh, cost of processing increases and more short fiber content higher short fiber content fiber you normally do not use for carded yarn then we have to go for combing. So, unnecessary there will be cost cost implication. So, for that we must know what is the short fiber content of a fiber fiber mass. Also it contributes to weaker yarn. So, yarn strength will be less okay, and less efficient spinning process because the short fiber higher short fiber content will have weaker yarn also the yarn uniformity will be poor because the it will create the floating fibers. Okay. Long length fiber are mostly preferred due to the reduction in number of fiber ends that is the hairs okay, with a higher strength yarn in the same length. Okay. And floating fiber index, the floating fiber index is an alternative to short fiber content that is that I have already mentioned the short fiber content is the indication of floating fiber index. So, shorter the fiber the, uh, the more will be the floating fibers. So, it explains the number of short fibers which are not clamped by in between by the nib rollers. So, that the short fiber content if it is high then it will give indication of floating fiber and which will actually create problem these are not uh, these are not crept by the pair of drafting ruler. The fibers that are floated on long fibers to pass through in the drafting zone without the influence of applied drafting mechanism. So, drafting mechanism it is not actually giving any help like this is drafting ruler, this is the front ruler, this is the back ruler. Okay. Now, fiber mass is getting drafted, so, this is moving in this direction, this is moving faster speed, this is slower speed. Okay. Now, the short fiber content, short fibers are the floating fibers are like this, this is neither gripped by the back roller nor by the front roller, it is a floating, it is moved by the surface contact of the normal fibers. So, these are the floating fiber, this floating fibers create problem of yarn uniformity. So, what we have discussed? We have discussed in detail of fiber length parameter, fiber length uniformity parameters and now the next segment we will discuss the methods of measurement. Till then, thank you.